Welcome to Bat Ranch, I'm Dr. Matt. This kitty has been dubbed Sunshine. Sunshine is covered in fleas. You can see the flea dirt, if this camera will focus. Covered in fleas, I just saw one crawling right there. Someone had put a flea collar on him, but it is not doing anything. So we'll get that off and put some good meds on him that'll actually kill these things, because just covered in fleas. And the story was he was attacked by um, another cat, a, a feral cat. He was just an outside kitten, and he was attacked by a, another male cat, and someone found him and took him to a vet, and they got him treated. He had a little abscess, but they, they treated it, and he got better. And then all of a sudden, he went paralyzed in his back end. So you can see that he just... He is not normal back there. He has no muscle. You can see the muscle tone in his front legs is normal, really good. And then back here, just all shrunken up, shriveled up, because he hasn't been using these back legs at all. He just can't, he can't do it. And he had this big lump back here, which I stuck some needles in and I drew out um, eight milliliters of pus. Will you hold on to him just so he didn't fall off the table on? Poking him. Yeah. So there's like more than that in there too. Let me get it all out. So my um my hope would be that once this infection is cleared up, whatever this is, the uh, feeling comes back to his back legs. If it doesn't, then I mean he might be permanently paralyzed. If that's what they told us, uh, they said, "Well, give him a couple, when give him a couple of weeks with the steroid and whatnot, mm -hmm. and at least like to give him a chance." Yeah. So, um, we got out about eight milliliters of pus. So what my hope is is that he just has some sort of he had a cat bite abscess right there, so some cat bit him there, drug all that bacteria in under his skin, and then it started festering and got so inflamed that it got into his spinal cord right there. Um, I'm hoping that's all it is, and I'm hoping with antibiotics and time and us draining this thing, which we just did, he doesn't have that lump anymore, I'm hoping that that will be enough to make him regain function, because he, he has a little bit of motor back here, but not enough to coordinate or control or anything. So hopefully, with time and meds, this little guy will be a normal kitten again. You can probably quiet, you can hear him purring. He doesn't feel good, but he's he wants to try. He's he's trying. So I think he has a little fighter spirit. I think we can fix him. We're gonna do our best to do that. came off that one cat. Jeez, poor kitten. Sorry. Swim. Swim. <laughs> yeah. And that's after the bath. <laughs> You poor little kitten. It is the next day, and when I came in this morning, first thing I noticed is he has another lump there, so it just filled back up, which I'm not surprised abscesses do that. It's not as big as it was, but it's still just producing um, pus. So what I'm gonna do, he's got dead fleas all in him. He had so many fleas yesterday. What I'm gonna do is anesthetize him and clip his hair here, and then I'm gonna actually go make a little puncture wound, a little stab wound, so that this will stay open and drain, so the pus won't just sit under skin. He's still about the same on his feet back here, especially his right. He just, well, that might be an improvement from yesterday. I don't know. I think we might totally fix this kitty. I'm hoping. Spinal injury is always kind of weird, but that looks better than yesterday.
and he's purring. Bring that camera in close. He's a happy little man. So, I'm gonna go ahead and anesthetize him right now. Fleas coming off too. So this is gonna be gross for those who are squeamish. I'm gonna poke a hole in this kitty's back and pus is gonna come out. And that is your problem right there. Ugh, man, nothing grosses me out except pus. Pus gets me every time. So I'm just squeezing all this stuff out. And now I'm just going to leave this hole. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit bigger and just leave it so it will continue to drain. Because that's our problem is there's just nowhere for it to go. It's filling up under the skin. So we gave it a little out now. I'm just gonna flush this thing. Knock as much of the bacteria out of there. So pus is just, when there's a lot of bacteria or nasty stuff, the body flushes it with a bunch of white blood cells and just fluid, trying to flush all the bacteria out and kill all the bacteria. When it's holding up under the skin, it makes it a lot harder for the body to do that. But now we have an open pathway for it to flush and drain out of. So this is gonna be nasty for a few days. It's gonna be draining stuff, but it's gonna be a lot better for the little kitten um, to not have that stuck in his body. It'll be coming out. So. I have a really good feeling about this. I think um, in uh, I think just a couple days time, we're gonna see these little legs starting to work a lot better. Fingers crossed. It has been one day since we did the surgery to open up that little hole on his back. And let's see what we got. No swelling here. Are you purring already? Are you purring already? So no swelling like we had yesterday. Can you stand up? Come here kitten. Oh, let's see what we got here. That is the best you have ever walked. You're a good kitten. You're a good kitten. Those, what do you think? Does he look good? I think you look good. Can you walk though? I wanna see you walk, come on. He's definitely standing on his leg way better than he was. I think he might be a little scared of you, Doze. You're kind of intimidating to a tiny kitten. What do you think? You quit purring when you saw does. Yo, you did. So every day this little guy is improving, which is a good thing. So we'll just keep, he does not like my dog. So we will just keep watching him, keep giving him antibiotics and some good nutrition and some love, and hopefully he'll continue to improve. And I really hope that sometime in the next week, this little kid will be running around and acting like a normal kitten and not a sick, paralyzed kitten. It's been a few more days, and check out this dude. Hi, bud. Hi, buddy. Don't fall out of the cage. Don't fall out. We don't need you breaking anything now that your legs work. So he has a tiny little bump there, but his hole that I made is totally healing up. Check this out. Look at him walking. Come here. Awesome. So we just took a paralyzed kitten that couldn't use its back legs, couldn't control its pee or poop, and we made it into a normal kitten. We will let him rest up, heal up a little more. He's not totally normal yet. He doesn't jump and run and play like a normal kitten, but I think he's gonna be there in probably a week. It has been several weeks, this guy is walking Normally now, you can see his hair is pretty much all grown back in. So he's healthy enough now that we're gonna do his neuter. Unfortunately for him, but it'll make his life a lot easier. You a good boy. So we're gonna go ahead and anesthetize him right now and neuter him. All done, our boy is still sleeping, but he is waking up from anesthesia right now.